What's up, dark people? Okay, today we're talking about exceptions. Uh, these are the you know little gremlins, little bugs in your code that pop up and uh, tell you something bad happened. The happy path uh, did not happen in your code, and so you see an exception. Uh, something to think about is like the software program, the programmer, like whenever you encounter an error in real life, like some programmer had to create that exception for you to see. The programming language just didn't make it on the fly unless it was programmed to do so. Okay, um, so let's, let's think about uh, exceptions and error messages. Usually they're interchangeable. Like in, uh, in Ruby, uh, the language I use typically for work, um, errors and exceptions, we use that terminology interchangeably. Uh, but at Dart, it has a very specific meaning, okay? And I'll show you the differences. So the docs say uh, your Dart code can throw and catch exceptions. Okay, uh, so we will actually write code to throw an exception and we will write code where we want to catch an exception. Um, an exception is an error. So exceptions are errors indicating that something unexpected or exceptional happened. Um, you know, if, if your code just runs and nothing breaks, like that's just normal code. There's nothing exceptional about that. Um, if the exception is not caught, the isolate that raised the exception is suspended. Okay, um, the exception can happen, but th this idea of catching an exception is to write into your code a way to anticipate what could happen, okay? Um, and, you, and you can do something with it. You can say, hey, catch this type of exception that's maybe like a timeout error, okay? Like the service you're calling is down. Um, and just retry it in a few minutes. Okay, you could do that instead of causing your whole program to crash. If it's an uncaught exception, the isolate, um, and if you're new to Dart, an isolate, the way I like to think about it is just like this little uh, space on the machine, wherever you're running, if it's a mobile app, it's on the phone, if it's in the web, it's maybe on a server somewhere. Like, the isolate is just a piece of space on that machine that is dedicated to run your program at the time. It is isolated from other things, okay? Uh, and your little program is running in that isolate. Um, the isolate that raised the exception is suspended, okay? So if you are in school, you are enrolled, you are taking classes, you can go to class, you can go to recess, uh, but when you're suspended, you can't go to class, you can't go to recess, you're kicked out of school. Uh, Schooling stops for you when you're suspended. The same thing happens to our program. It stops, like your program crashes. Uh, if you have a mobile app, that's not good. So typically we want to catch our exceptions. Uh, but when they aren't caught, the isolate is, that raise the exception is suspended. Typically the isolate and its program are terminated, okay? So the program has this little isolate that runs. Um, it has an uncaught exception. It's terminated. The program that was running the isolate is also terminated. Okay. Now, I'm not coming from the Java world, so I don't really know this thing about what they're calling unchecked exceptions. But they say, in contrast to Java, all of Dart's exceptions are unchecked. So apparently, you can have checked and unchecked. Um, methods don't declare which exceptions they might throw, and you aren't required to catch any exceptions. So what I take away from this without knowing the intricacies of Java is um, that it's a bit more tolerant. Um, Dart is a little more tolerant of what you can and, and can't do. Um, sometimes that's good. So like in Dart with the type system, um, it's, it's nice that it, it catches type errors before you compile your program. Uh, that strict nature of Dart is good. But here it's not as strict because you don't you're not required to catch any exceptions and methods don't declare which exceptions they might throw. Um, so you don't have to, you don't have to declare any like that. All right, that's all I wanna say about that. Um, Dart provides exception and error types. 
as well as numerous predefined subtypes. Uh, these are things that usually implement or extend from uh, exception and error. Uh, for example, when we did assert in the control flow statements earlier, um, when you assert something in a development environment and your condition is false, uh, you raise an assertion error. That's, that's what it does for you. Okay, and as a result, your program crashes and it's, it's designed to do that when you're developing your program. Okay, and that's kind of the big difference between error and exception. Okay, um, you will define your own exceptions when you write code. Um, one thing to note here is that throwing an exception is just an expression, okay? So you can throw any non-null object, not just exception and error objects, as an exception. Uh, let me show you this stack overflow. So someone was asking, like, what's the difference between error and exception in Dart? Okay. Um, the I want to show you this answer first, where we're talking about um, an exception should be thrown for regular expected program flow, and it's intended to be caught. Okay. Uh, one example is a timeout exception. So if you make a call to some API service, some Google Maps or Weather or Twilio or you know whatever, uh, and that service happens to be down, um, or something goes wrong where it times out, you don't get a response back from the server. Um, you'll get a timeout exception. So then you want to catch that timeout exception and do something with it. You know, either queue a job to run later or notify somebody that you know it didn't work. Whatever. Uh, the error is something that should not be caught. Um, this is unexpected program flow. Typically, like when you assert that something should um, uh, uh, always be true. Okay, um, and the best example is the assertion error. All right, this is what is raised um, whenever your assert is false. Okay, um, those are the two big differences. Um, the accepted answer. Um, they have this post from uh, Bob Nystrom. So it says error and its subclasses are for programmatic errors. Um, if one of those occurs, your code is bad and you should fix your code. Okay, programmatic errors. Your code is bad, you should fix your code. Um, maybe like a missing semicolon, maybe that's some kind of error, a runtime error. Um, that's bad code, you should fix it. Put a semicolon in. Non-error exception classes are for runtime errors. Sometimes you can prevent them from being thrown, but often you cannot. Except in a few special circumstances, idiomatic Dart should throw errors, but never catch them. Okay, so if something is an error, like an assertion error, or um, you're implementing your own type of error, you should not catch them. Um, so don't catch errors, only catch exceptions, all right? Uh, that's something you should know right now as a Dart developer. Uh, they exist specifically not to be caught so that they can take down the app and alert the programmer to the location of the bug. Okay, so those are the two big differences uh, between error and exception. Now, let's look at some examples. Um, I've already copied uh, some of this code over into DartPad. So the first thing I want to show you is this. Uh, can we throw null? Okay, null is the special type of uh, thing. Um, and where is it? Yeah. Dart programs can throw any non-null object. Okay, so you can't throw null though. <laughs> okay, the type null of the thrown expression must be assignable to object. Um, I think I have that diagnostic thrown here. So if like I'm explicitly throwing null, obviously that's that's not good. But if something can be null, for example, like this string here, s, um, like this type is, is optional string, I think is how you say that. Um, there's a fix where you just like bang the s, where you're saying, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be, but um, this is how you make your code valid. All right, if you encounter this kind of thing. Uh, this is the most common way that you'll experience uh, this error, throw of invalid type, is because the thing you're throwing can be null. Uh, so just watch out for that. Okay, uh, that's the first thing. <clears throat> Second is, um, like here's an exception that Dart already knows about, 
It is a type of exception. I didn't define it anywhere in DartPad. Um, and it just takes a string. Okay, so here's, here's the message. Uh, and I'm specifically throwing, I am halting the execution of my code, the isolate uh, and its program stop. Um, the reason they stop is because I'm not catching this error. I'm just throwing it, all right? So in effect, this is blowing up my program. Um, it is causing it to crash. These are, these are terms, blow up, crash, um, fail, sometimes can be used. Um, in, in the Ruby world, we have a keyword that is raise. Uh, that's similar to throw. This is how we, we raise an error or we throw an error. Okay, so that's that's the the language we use on the Ruby side. First thing to note, it says uncaught error. I don't have a try catch block. Um, that something we'll cover later. It's an uncaught error. Here's the type. Okay, we threw a specific type. So this is like the class. This is this is uh, almost like a new. Like does that work? It says unnecessary new keyword, but it works. So basically format exception, there is a class somewhere called format exception that implements exception. Um, and it takes as part of its constructor, a positional string. That, that's what it does, okay? So that's all we're doing is we have this expression here like this. Um, and there's the, there's the message we wanna give to the developer who raised that exception. Um, yeah, so that's the anatomy. Of, of an exception. Um, it says we can throw arbitrary objects, okay? So for example, here is a string. Um, in this case, I've put parentheses around it because I wanted to show you that this throw can take parentheses, uh, kind of like print, right? Okay, so check this out. Well, this is unreachable code, right? Um, actually, so look, check this out. Uh, here is an error. It is it is just an error. It is not an assertion error. It is just an error. Um, earlier, I talked about you know needing a semicolon. So yeah, it's dead code. It's never going to be reached. But when we compile the code, um, the analyzer is like, dude, you can't you can't do this. Okay, it had an error. Compilation failed. We need to fix our code. Now that we have, um, okay. I just want to, what I'm what I'm showing you here is that the signature is the same, whether we throw it or print it, um, the signature is kind of like the same. Uh, the only difference is I don't think we can do that. I could be wrong. Okay, you can throw this this string object. Um, yeah. Yeah, see that that's an error. You can't you can't do that. So print has to have um, the parentheses, but throw does not. Okay, it, it's fine to just throw throw that like that. Um, here, oops. Here is just object. <laughs> you can throw an arbitrary object, uncaught error object. Uh, so throw can do anything. Throw halts the ex throw halts your program, kills the isolate. Um, and then it just prints out, you know, what you're throwing. Um, here's some some information. Here's the thing. Uh, I'm giving you this data, Mr. or Mrs. Miss, you know, whatever <laughs> person programmer. Like, do something with it. Okay. So that's that's like the the big signature of exceptions in Dart. Okay. Um, All right, yeah, let's get through this and then I'll go through some examples. We're gonna save catch and finally for another video because I wanna go into some actual code. Um, it says note that, so like, yeah, you can throw strings, but like production quality code usually throws types that implement error and exception. This is a very good opinion um, by the documentation writers to say this is how you should write dark code. This is what good quality code looks like. All right, because throwing in an, ex an exception is an expression, you can do it after these arrow statements or anywhere else that allows expressions. So here's our example. Um, we'd have to define this class. So I define something that's very similar. So here's the one that they offered to us. Um, if you are new to Dart, 
uh, this is the same function. It's just instead of the arrow syntax with one expression here, we have a block of code where you can have multiple expressions. Um, I just want to show you that these are the same thing. Um, but to actually demonstrate usability, I've defined my own function here called give me five. Similar return type is void. Um, it takes an integer. Uh, this is just a variable. It could have been x. It didn't have to be five. Um, and then when x is five, okay, we print, you gave me five, then we break. So I'm also demonstrating what we recently learned about switch in case. Um, if, you, if we don't, what I'm showing here is that we want to throw an error, okay? So give me five. All right, you gave me five. If we pass six to give me five, it's not going to match this case. It's going to go to the default case, which says throw massive fail. Uh, so here, this is in production quality code, which is throwing a random object, which is a string. Uncaught error, massive fail. Okay. So <clears throat> this uh, is a quick overview of exceptions and throwing exceptions. Now, what I want to show you is um, something in the Flutter block library, okay? This is um, an example where the person who created this package, they had to implement their own exception, okay? Um, and what this, what this does is it creates a very good user experience where you, the user, are a Flutter developer, a Dart developer. Okay, so here is a class keyword. Here's our class name. Sign up with email and password failure. Look here, it implements exception. Okay, so earlier it said Okay, where did I see it? Yeah, production quality code usually throws types that implement error or exception. Okay, so here we are implementing exception. Here is our constructor, okay, um, where we have this, this message that if you don't pass in your own message, I guess it looks like um, an unknown exception occurred. So that's like the default fallback message. Uh, this dot message message is defined down here as a, uh, a property. But um, you can imagine, you know, you put in your username and password, you uh, tap on the sign in button, or sorry, the sign up. Um, and it makes a call to Firebase, and depending what response you get back from Firebase, um, if it wasn't successful, you want to be able to um, give that error message in a friendly way to the user of your program. Okay, so if there's an invalid email, um, we're gonna we're gonna switch on that case uh, and return an a new instance of our own class here, right? So look, these are new const constructors and we're passing in a string. Um, you see how at the default it just says return const and a new instance of this, this class. In that, that case, an unknown exception occurred. Okay, so it's handling all the fallback positions. So this is a really good example of an exception class. It implements exception. Uh, it's got a constructor. It has... Um, you know, all these cases that could happen. Email's already in use, the user's disabled, um, you know, operation not allowed, weak password, and, and then a fallback. So, so this is a very good uh, example, all right, to, to look at. Now, how is this actually used? Because this is just, um, this is part of the authentication repository, okay? So this is like the interface between um, uh, the, the the data source that we're going to. Okay, that's what a repository pattern is here. Now, if you look up at um, this method, this is in the sign up qubit, sign up qubit.dart. What we have is a, a, um, a function, or, you know, we're in a class probably, so this is a method. Sign up form submitted. So this is the 
the um, the method that is actually run whenever you say submit. All right, so let's walk through and see what happens. Um, we have a try block here. We haven't gotten to these yet, right? We've only studied throw, um, but this is how you sort of wrap your, um, this is a good practice. Um, in Ruby, it's begin and, uh, and end. But here it's try, so we're gonna have some implementation code. This is the thing we wanna do, the thing that could possibly error, okay? We're gonna call sign up, okay? Now, this sign up is in our, is, you know, a, a method from our authentication repository. Um, it could take a while. It's a network call out to Firebase. Okay, we wanna sign up with an email and password. Here it is. We're passing in that state here. Okay, now what happens when you encounter one of these errors? Okay, we wanna catch it. So we're gonna catch that error represented by E. Um, okay. So we're catching this specific type, this sign up with email and password failure. Now, check that out. That E, that's gonna go back here, okay? And it's gonna be like, what is the case? What are we matching on, all right? Um, at the end, it's going to emit, uh, this is just a little bit of block where we're emitting the state with an error message and a status, and that goes back to the form that you can see. Um, if we if we get an error message, uh, or sorry, um, we get an error that is not signed up with email and password failure, uh, we kind of have this sort of like little fallback thing where we're just catching any error. Now, the question you might be wondering is, well, what happens if I sign up and I don't encounter this sign up with email and password failure? Like, how do I even know that, that that's happening? Well, it turns out over in the authentication repository, there is this signup method, right? So this signup method we called right here in this await block, authentication repository dot sign up. Uh, it's defined right here. All right, it has its own try block. Now, what it does is it goes to Firebase and it says create user with email and password. That's what signing up does, right? It makes sense. Pass in the email and password. Now, on Firebase auth exception, okay, this is something that Firebase, their programmers over in Firebase land, they're sending back to us, okay? We wanna catch the error. Um, and this is where we will actually throw it. So check this out. This is where you throw the error, okay? Um, this, is, this is a beautiful example. The authentication repository in block uh, in the sign up method. Um, yeah, let's try to do something, which is go to Firebase and create a user with email and password. If you get a Firebase auth exception, we want to throw in this thing. So Firebase auth exception is something that we get from the Firebase library that we use, that we installed in our pub spec. This sign up with email and password failure, this is something that we are modifying the exception we get back and we're making it uh, like a better error message basically for our users. Okay, so that's how that gets thrown. That's how we get down to um, to this. We're like, oh, that's that's what we're throwing. Okay, we, now we need to catch this. Um, okay, so there's a sort of a separation of concerns between what's in the authentication repository that interfaces with Firebase and the signup qubit, which interfaces with our application. That's why we're catching this failure type that we defined instead of the, um, the Firebase one itself. Okay, Firebase auth exception. Okay, so this, this is a real throw in real life. All right, it's a great example. Okay, um, yeah, so we went through some examples. We looked at a real world scenario. We looked at a stack overflow answer on the difference between exception and error. We want to handle exceptions or catch them. Um, in, in Ruby, we call that rescuing from the exception. And uh, yeah, 
errors represent something bad in your code that you should fix and you should not catch them. Um, but exceptions, you should. Okay, and so that's, um, that's the difference there. All right, that is a good quick introduction, I think, to exceptions and the throw keyword uh, to stop execution flow in your program. Uh, next time we'll get into catch uh, with these try blocks. And um, this could even be called try catch, really. Uh, and then finally, we'll get to the finally keyword. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. So thanks for your time, and we'll see you next time. Bye.